The Kaiser in Lower South Coast can prove to be quite a challenge in finding some fish certain times of the year. This past summer season did not produce a lot of catches, with only a few here and there. And then with the change of the season, it can become even tougher. Waiting for the winter species to come through. Morning, morning. We're here at Mdoni Point, Pennington. I haven't fished this spot in a long, long time. Normally sardine run, but a lot of guys spinning here, some suck every now and again. Hasn't been consistent, but we're here, the team's here. Kumaran, Shalvin and the whole crowd there. Even Tevin made it up. Can't believe it. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for, for watching and uh, thanks for everyone that subscribes already. If you haven't, please subscribe, like the video, that helps us. And hit that bell notification button if you want to be notified every time we upload a video. Um, fishing is starting to, sure, it's been a horrible summer on the south coast and even the north coast hasn't been great. But there's a bit, a bit of fish coming here and there, so now water time. Spend a lot of time in the water and see what we can get. So today, quite versatile. We've got something of everything here, spinning, sliding, casting bait. Uh, Shalvin's even got his drone here. So somewhere we have to buy a bite. And, but such an awesome spot, guys. Um, really, any, anyone who knows Pennington, it's just so many beaches and even the, the launching site for the biggest sharks in Sardine Run and Sardine Run. And then all these reefs, great for scratching, great for the bronze beam. Here yeah, of the point, uh, spinning. That caught, uh, you just told me, Brad just told me about a, a, a Dorado that caught here recently. I know about two Kuta, I think in the last two weeks, and quite a few Snook. Deep, deep water spot, another one of our South Coast deep water spots that anything can happen. I know tuna that came, about tuna that came in here, uh, sardine run era or oh, time of the year. Co um, Cobia, if you watched, any of you watched the show with Tyron Bain, he got a nice prodigal sun here. So yeah, you don't know, uh, there's eagle rays everywhere on the south coast now, feeling close. It's difficult to get an eagle ray to take your bait, but what a majestic fish to catch. Beautiful fish. But uh, you see them feed right on the edge, of, that's why it's sometimes difficult to put a bait in front of them. And uh, you see them jump oftenly, often uh, really, really majestic when they jump out of the water like that. Fantastic fighter though. Very clever, uses the current. So yeah, there's a couple of options this time of the year. The blackfin sharks uh, show their faces as well, or start showing their faces, the bigger ones. So all we can do is make sure we've got some baits in the water and see, see what we can uh, lure in and get some interest from. But yeah, thanks for watching and we'll keep you updated this morning. The lower south coast prime time is when the shad comes in and the sardine run, luring in a whole bunch of fish and turning things around. Mid-autumn there's the hope for some snook coming through, which in May will reach their prime. The deep water points is the obvious choice, but this season there's only been a few snook so far. all your likes and all your comments yeah it's my first day of leaf so that's why i'm excited and not only that i get to fish so we're here at um, donny point uh, hoping you get some good fish girls uh, there's some snook running around and the guys been getting some butcher on the spoon and uh, there was a gerardo that was landed as well and the beliefs there's some eagles moving around so there's some guys on my left that's busy spinning We've got our spinning uh, set up up and ready. So if we see any action, we'll change over. But, uh, noticing all the guys that are spinning, there's no bait in the water, so I decided to make a quick uh, small chocker and uh, red eye bait. And I just lobbed it here in the front. So hopefully to entice any edible that's in the front there. Or maybe you get the smaller non edibles. So we'll hold tight and wait. But if that doesn't work out, we want to catch a fish, so we'll put a bait out with the drone later on.
Okay, um, one of the fish that really excites me most of the time is the southern Popanos. And we're in the area now here from Pennington down to Basie, where they do come. And the guys do get them every now and again. Um, so we three, three, four days no moon spring before that. And I just spoke to one of the locals who explained to me where they normally get them, yeah. So I'm going to start in the morning. It's low tide at uh, 8 o'clock. But I'm going to put a little bait out. And what I'm doing is doing octi leg. Putting a bit of crayfish on it. And I'm going to wrap it with a little bit of chocolate on the outside. And that's just to keep my crayfish lasting a little bit longer with the pickets. Octi. Now here's my, my thing with octopus leg. I firmly believe it will get you a better bite, a bigger bite. Stays on the hook longer, the last bigger fish to get there. It's tough for the, the pickers not to get you off so easily. And uh, always get you that slightly bigger fish. Say, there's a whole bunch of pommies coming out. And you're the only one with octi leg. You might get the bigger one. So I've put a little bit of foam on a 3 0 hook. I'm just going to secure the octi onto that. And tie that up. And the reason I tie it off is if they start hitting the top of your bait, you want layers of cotton. If it's got slight teeth and they break your cotton, you don't want all the cotton to jump off. You do a couple of layers. Pulp. The pulp will just tie at the back. Some good baits here. It's also the obviously the crabs, all the crustaceans, sea lice. Don't have any of those. But we'll give them a bit of crayfish, octi, choca combo, a little seafood platter for them. Hopefully that goes. Didn't make it too neat. I want it all fluffy and mushy. Spending the morning at Mdoni Point is much better than sitting at the office, even though we didn't get a decent bite. We'll definitely be back to give it another good shot. Another day on the south coast of Natal. Not in at all. We are catching fish. <laughs> it's slightly more difficult than winning the lotto. Warren put in an early morning session in Mountain 20 as well, looking for some edible fish. Morning guys. Beautiful morning here down at Mountain 20. The guys came to spin here this morning and then put out some live baits, throw a couple of baits out. Uh, thank you guys a lot for subscribing to the channel. For all the new subscribers, my name is Kumar and Micah. I'm the local lower south coast ambassador. So yeah guys, uh, yesterday I was here. I came down with family mostly to uh, I came to swim here at the tidal pool. And while I was here I saw a lot of bait fish getting smashed right close in the afternoon. And then I spoke to a couple of the divers and the divers said they've been getting a lot of snook and a lot of kuta. So we out here this morning spinning first, trying to get a snook or trying to get a kuta, maybe even a little small pony. And uh, if I do get a bonnie, I'm going to make a quarter trace and I'm going to slide it out in a quarter trace. Yeah, um, we're going to keep trying. We just started now, this is my third cast. I hope we can go on tight. So during the course of the day, I'll be showing you guys all the methods we're using, especially sliding. I'll be showing you guys how we make a slide trace and how we actually slide a bit out as well. Yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Uh, 
take a little bit of the spin here now. I've got a small Shimano Nexus that I put on here. It's got 8 pound crystal grade on it. Um, only reason why I put the small reel on now on this 11 foot 6 power spin Daiwa is because I want to get that extra distance on the, on the 8 pound. I do have my Sautika 4.5 with 20 pound there. I'm spinning for the for the snook and spinning for the for the bonnie, so I'm going a bit light. And uh, if I see a garrick, I'm gonna take a plug, and then I'll use my Sautika with 20 pound. So I'm gonna have some fun this morning. So I'm getting extra distance with lighter braid. And we're throwing light food as well. So yeah, so the good setup. Nice and effective way of fishing as well. Yeah, looking nice. Let's get a backing on the cast. Light rain, get your front of the cast, just that you have to play the fish. Nice and easy. You can't really pass it with light rain. But yeah, on casting wise with light lures, nice rod, it helps. Every now and again it really helps you get that extra distance. That's the reason why I'm using 8 pounds here. Normally I spin with 15 pounds and uh, I throw plugs with 20 pounds, 30 pounds. All depending on the size of the fish. This reel I normally use on my 9 foot rod uh, when I'm throwing off Stabel and stuff but because here I need to get a bit further it's not as deep as Stabel I'm using 11 foot 6 Alright guys, I've decided to throw a nice uh, chucker bait out Spinning was slow, no pickups on the lures we are throwing. A couple of guys were spinning on the top of the high rock. They didn't get anything. I see some guys fishing for shad here as well. So I actually rigged up a, a throw bait trace now. It's a bite trace. Just in case there's anything with teeth around, I've got a better chance. Because I'll be throwing a chocker and the fish down this side love chocker, especially at hammers. I'm fishing with my elite 15 foot. So I'm throwing on an 8 ounce cone sinker. And then onto that I've got a, a bite trace, short piece of steel and then my lead again. The water's looking lovely. So I'm going to put a nice chocker bait and see what's around. Alright guys, I'm going to show you the baits that I'll be using here. Um, fishing with a chocker, straight chocker. He's a lovely chocker from Adcan. Cut it down the middle. So what I have here is a nice white flesh. Cut two strips. I'm not going to beat the chocker at all. I'm just going to create more feelers here quickly. So what I do is I take my chocker, place it onto my hook, keeping that hook proud. I bind the chocker up all the way to the feeler. Take the other one that you've beaten, put it on the underneath. Now the only reason why I'm not beating my chocker is because of peckers. My base is not beaten, but what I'm going to put on top is going to be beaten. Hey guys, then what you do now, take a chocker and you beat it into a pulp. Just bind that on. Cut a nice small piece and you beat that chucker. As you can see that hook is always proud. And that's your chucker bait that I'll be throwing now. Lovely bait. So let's get this bait in the water and see what's here to pick it up. Getting the freshest possible bait is very very important especially when the fishing stuff making sure you got the best chocker and the freshest bite possible pumping some cracker is always a good option when it falls on you your blood runs cold but don't you sweat your pretty skin because it melts away for it sinks in and you dream about this very night Sky. 
All right, guys. Uh, I'm doing 21, so productive this morning. We did some spinning. We put some uh, chocker baits out. No fish. Some locals also fishing with us. There hasn't been anything around. There's been some small black tails, but uh, one of the divers just came out and asked him what's happening in the back. He said it's quite empty at the moment. Yeah, he did tell us that Stabell this morning had some fish, so we're gonna head to Stabell now and see if we can get you guys a fish. Again, try some big baits, uh, see if we can get a slide bait as well. Hopefully, we'll go on tight in Stabell, so stay tuned. We'll see you guys soon at Stabell. Stabell also proved to be a bit unproductive. As with most points at certain times of the year, you can really struggle to get a bite. But all you can do is keep on trying. So the next day we went back to Stabell in search of a bite. My first bait was a nice big chocker bait for a potential hammer or grey shark or if there was any bigger edibles around. And this time of the year, you always have a spinning rod with you. So we also put in a couple of casts to see if there's any game fish around. Hi right, guys, drone uh, fishing wasn't so successful. Just the one hammer this morning. Now after I didn't get any other pulls with the drone. I see Andre got a throw bit out, I wanted to put a throw bit. But when I was looking at the hole here, I saw a lot of stone leaves. I said, let me have some fun with light tracker. Basically, I'm just using a prawn, small hook, and I'm going to be trying for the storm limb. If I'm lucky, I might get a brown limb as well. Green. You can see the blue shine on its head from their blue fish. They call it in some areas. I'm gonna put him in the rock pool there. We keep the bronze bream in a pool, firstly to get some underwater shots, as when you release a bronze bream, if there's a shoal of them around, it will chase the whole shoal away. Unfortunately, no other bites came that day at Stabell. She burns the bridges in my head. A few days later, I took my father-in-law and the family to Mkobe Beach at South Broome in search of some cob. So you could feel the same. Throw that ugly octavic as is. Can I give you all of my love? Till we dance the night away. Can I give you all of my love? Till we dance the night away. Nice Bobby. Or at least Dad just got here. South Brew. That's what we were hoping to get one or two of them. Interested to measure this. This looks about, I think, 58. Legal size in the towel is uh, 60. After about a three-hour session, we only got the one cob, and decided to pack up. We're back at Stabell, guys.
Guys, we're back here at Stabel. Uh, I've been fishing Stabel quite a bit as of recent. But we're here to try for some flatfish. Guys, make friends with the divers. Uh, the Spiros are, are good guys. They're not bad guys. They're very good guys. And once you make friends with them and you earn their trust, when you do come fishing, if you phone them and tell them you know, what's in the water, they, they tell you exactly. So that's where we get our information from. Or myself. That's where I get my information from, from the divers. And they let me know exactly what's in the water. So I'm going to start off throwing small baits and then uh, start building baits a bit bigger to increase the bite, uh, the bites. But for now, small baits, nice fleshy baits. See if I can lure a small sandy for now or a small hammer. Nice, juicy, juicy, uh, bony and macro bait. Mr. Lawrence frequents these points on the low south coast with regular good success and again this morning got stuck in a small guitar fish or sandy as we know it. This is why he gave the minister a hard time. He actually got power looked in the side. Melissa actually wants to tag him. Melissa does a lot of tag and research, so uh, tag and release. So that's the reason why we got him here. He's just getting his tagging kit and he's going to tag them. Every single fish the Melissa catches, he tags every single thing and safely releases them. I'm busy using some chocker here. I just fished in that little gully there, and I'm very happy because we've been fishing here for about an hour and a half now, and I haven't caught anything. I just switched to a small little rod and just caught this nice little black tail. Alright guys, unfortunately I finally got my pull. This fish put me off. Put me off clean. There's a decent fish. Let me show you guys. Right there. As you can see. He pulled me clean. There's his races here. He pulled me off. He put me. There was a decent pull. I reeled, I reeled down to strike. We we'll to pull. And as I picked up, this fish took off. Took my whole face. And I was fishing a bite face, so. Putting in the time proves to be the way to get some bites. And some you win, some you lose. struggling to get good fish. Today I'm starting off scratching and I'm using a slightly bigger hook, a 3-0, because I'm going to aim for a brusher. Maybe it can't be the water's very rough. Yesterday we had that 4.2 meter 
Swalls here in uh, Natal with that big west that came through. So today it's still up about 2.4, 2.5, quite big, rough, but not really kicking, it's not dumping, it's rolling. So I like it. Um, I think I'm a bit undergunned with sinkers. I bought uh, three ounce uh, uh, nylon grabs. And we yet to bell. The point is rough, so I'm not gonna go there yet. Uh, I think we high tied in about an hour, hour and a half. So we're fishing here to the left of Stabell Point. There's a gully, a really, really nice spot. Uh, on the right hand side, it will be kicking up sand. I didn't even go there because I know with the off to a west, the sand kicks up badly there. So we're going to try this gully and see if we're lucky. We'll hold some thumbs. I'm putting a trio ring soy and I'm putting an octi leg to start off with. Only thing with the Arctic leg, look, they catch big fish, they catch good fish. You wait longer for a bite, but they do catch good fish and they pick a proof. But if there's an eel anywhere in this section, it will come eat the Arctic leg. So let's hope there's no eels today. Last time I got some eels here. And uh, yeah, we'll give it a good shot and see. Old times. Beautiful morning, quite heavy clouds flying there. But yeah, maybe if the sea settles a bit, there's a northeaster coming later today. If the sea settles a bit, it could even spin a bit. Um, there's a lot of bait shoals been around in the area. But uh, the northeaster brings them closer in for us, so we'll see. But let's try for a cracker quickly. I'm not going to get one talking. wasn't cold. There's an eel in the hole and you've got an octi in there and it's not going to leave it. Today is uh, an eel day. We've been only catching eels the whole entire time. So yeah, I'm lucky I got a smaller one than Andre. He's hooking all the buses, so it's fine. But yeah, this is uh, they become a pest. So best to cut the hook as close as possible, remake a new trace, and release this fish. So they get uh, where the hook is. Be careful, these things can bite. They give you quite a nasty bite as well. I'll cut that small piece out. You don't have to cut it out, just hold it on. That's it there. Let's release this bugger back. Okay, 
a new face and get another eel. That's how it looks like to be today. Starting another day on Stabel, eventually the tide must turn. Now the anticipation runs high this time of the year, waiting for the winter fish to come in. Soon from early May there should be more snook around. The odd garrick has shown its face as well, as I had a pick up on a blacktail the other day. And then the shad, carb and the sardines to follow. So this in between period can be frustrating, but still much better standing next to the water than not. We'll keep you updated with what's happening in this area. And as soon as there's some sardine or shad news, we'll be quick to share it. Thank you for watching ASFN and thank you for everyone that subscribed already. Hit the bell notification button to receive a notification every time we upload a video. 